Hello YouTubes, so a few of you have asked for a more informational video like the ones I used to do. I haven't done one in a while and I do apologize. So today I am honoring your request and I am talking about how to become a marine biologist. You know, I realized in one of my previous videos I talked about what a marine biologist does and what the job description entails, but I didn't really speak about how to become a marine biologist. And even though this is again quite a complicated topic, I am going to try and tackle it today and hopefully provide some useful information for you. So this is quite a complicated topic because depending on what type of marine biologist you want to be and depending on where you live in the world, how you become a marine biologist is going to be a little bit different but in general there is sort of the same path that everybody takes um, and all with a few deviations and that's what i'm going to be speaking about today because this is a complicated topic i have my trusty whiteboard with me so first up i'm sure we'll all agree that we have to go to school so here where i live we call our final years of school high school i'm sure that's what it's like for other parts of the world and when you're in high school generally you'll have to take some kind of maths or some kind of science subject you'll just double check what university you want to go to for what requirements you need but generally maths science biology those kinds of things and you know you don't have to be be top in your grade but you have to get pretty decent marks because in order to get into university which is generally quite competitive you need pretty good marks so finish off your high school with the best marks you can accomplish and then what we do is we go to university and in university you always start with something called undergrad which means your undergraduate you have yet to graduate so in undergrad it's pretty general the types of courses that you do but you'll major in some sort of marine biology ecology evolution genetics that kind of major and this is generally depending on where you live in the world three to four years some in some places there's a fourth year built in as your honours year but uh, where I live it was three years so I did three years of my undergrad and then once that was done I did just one year of honours and that creates your fourth year. All right, so you have fourth year of undergrad. Then you move on to something called postgraduate studies and in america this is called grad school and um, so now you've graduated with your degree and now you are going further on your studies again this is different depending on when you are i know in the states you generally don't do a masters and i think in australia you don't really have to do a masters either but here in south africa and i think in the uk as well you generally have to do a masters which is kind of um, so there's two different types of masters you can do. You can either do a purely research-based masters or you can do half coursework, half research-based, depending on what you want to do. Um, and this is a minimum of two years. Some people take longer if they're not really into it, but generally you take two years to do your masters. And this is where you have kind of getting the first understanding of what research is really about. You conduct your own research and you start to specialize over here so depending on what topic you're really interested in this is where you start to specialize okay so this is where it gets complicated because this is where the serious deviations start to occur so you've just completed your masters um, and now there are either one of two big sort of paths you can follow um, you can either go into something called academia which I'll actually explain second or you can go into something called industry now, I'm not really sure if this is quite the correct word used in the marine biology world, but this is where you go work outside of a university, but still in a marine biology role. So when you work in industry, you can either work for a non-government organization or a non-profit organization. You can work for the government itself. Um, so there are lots of different paths here that you can follow and within all of these different organizations you can fill different roles so you can either work as a research assistant where you assist uh, whatever center you're working with in their research you can be a field coordinator where you assist with the field work for your institution that you're working with or you can be a data scientist where you specifically work on the data that the institute collects 
or you can be a volunteer coordinator where you coordinate volunteers that's a bit easy coordinator so there are multiple opportunities for you to work outside of academia in what I kind of term industry or if you want to carry on in your sort of line of work in academia and work for university once you've completed your masters you go on to do your doctorate or your PhD and again depending on where you live in the world this takes a minimum of three to five years so if you're in the states or australia where you didn't do a two years masters generally a phd will take you five years but if you're like me and you've already done a two years masters you can complete your phd in three years now a phd can go on for much longer than this depending on what type of research you're doing and what type of worker you personally are but minimum generally three to five years and this is again very research orientated you produce a thesis at the end of it you are in control of your own research your own project and you produce your phd thesis at the end of it now again you can go from academia and move into this world of industry if you want to or you can stay in academia and do something called a postdoc which is after your doctoral degree, you do something very similar as I understand it, where you conduct your own research, um, it's kind of your own project, but you're not a student anymore, you are a professional worker, and you have not a supervisor, but um, what do they call it, like a guide, or, or another professional who is just there to you know help you and assist you along the way. But again, you conduct your own research. The main aim of this is to either um, learn more skills or to produce more research papers um, so this is if you want to carry on in academia this is quite a crucial path uh, part of your path and then again once you've done your postdoc you can move into this world of non-academia or you can stay in academia and work at a university and these posts are quite highly sought after and quite competitive but within a university eventually you want to sort of land up as an assistant professor oh sorry assistant professor or and then carry on to become a professor of a lab where you supervise students conduct your own research lecture live in the university sphere so yeah, <laughs> kind of a complex edit story at the end of the day. But as I've mentioned, there's sort of these two really different diverging paths that you can go on. You can go in academia and stay in university, or you can work outside of academia and work for the government or for nonprofit organizations or something like that. And within all of these fields, there are multiple different roles that you can take on. And at every different stage, you're going to learn different skills. But at every different stage, it's important to maximize the skills you can learn. So when you're in university, maximize um, the amount of reading that you do, the amount of general background knowledge you can accumulate. If you are interested in doing field work, try and volunteer on as many field projects as you can to increase your field skills. If there are ever opportunities for you to take extra courses on data analysis or on learning how to use software to analyze data just grab those opportunities and every single stage try and increase your skill set you know do your own personal diving certificate try and get a boat certificate so that you can drive a boat if you're interested in doing that kind of thing um a lot of the time this stuff isn't given to you when you go through this path but it's things that you need depending on what you want to do so it's important to build those skills as you go along and this is not an exhaustive list obviously there are multiple other things but if you are really interested in following a path similar to this it's best to speak to the people who are close to you potentially speak to your teachers at school speak to your professors at university and ask them what would be the best for you to do to get to where you need to go so I hope you found that helpful. As always, if you have any further questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will try to address them. Please like my video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything else you want to learn about, just ask away. And until next time, I hope you all have a happy day.